that Deathrip um, has been playing a lot of Azir as well in solo queue the past couple of days. So maybe we will see the Azir coming out as well. Like everybody wants to be a faker, uh, completely understandable. And the uh, ADC Sliver, he's been playing uh, some Jin and some Lucian. Would be great to see some Jin. Uh, I love his character. Um, and for the for the other team, I couldn't find that much. I couldn't find their names. Um, but uh, there are a couple of champions that are really great right now, like the Graves. Uh, I expect to see the Graves again. Um, maybe another Alistar. I really like to see Alistar with this combo. He, they can burst someone down immediately, like we see, like we saw just with Kaz do. But the Alistar gets even banned out, and the Azir as well. So everything I just said is nullified. Yeah. Thrown out of the window. Boom. Done. Fixed. <laughs> it's uh, we, we can start all over again, and now Rai is also getting banned out, so that's at least three out of uh, the champions that we saw last game as well. Now, Nidalee, of course, uh, I believe we saw her being banned out last game. I'm not entirely sure, but Nidalee gone, so. Atlist are gone, um, Azir gone, Rai is gone. I'm a little bit curious to see what Sven is going to be banning out, perhaps the Graves as well. Take that one out from... Oh, it's going to be Echo, and I believe Echo is one of those champions we've been seeing a lot of in top lane. Yeah, like uh, Echo is also that flex pick. We saw CLG Huey uh, playing him in the, in the mid lane as well. Um, he's, he's seeing some changes. Uh, Riot is changing Echo a bit to make him a little less tanky, a little bit more uh, uh, applicable for the mid lane. Um, like Echo is something like you can pick first pick and then put him in the top lane, mid lane, and even jungle if you want to. So. Those flex picks you see coming out, like here with the Trundle again. Trundle uh, is fit for the support role, jungle role even, and the top lane as we saw last game. So like those flex picks are really important for the first one, and banning out the Echo is also banning out the flex pick and a really strong top pick. And, like, Meantime though, yeah, uh, it, it LeBlanc looked, getting banned out. Yeah, well, um, I believe Deathrip uh, plays some LeBlanc as well. It, this looks like a target ban at least. I saw him play a little bit of LeBlanc in his last couple of games. Um, and LeBlanc is, of course, really strong. Like the Rice, uh, they can take over a game very easily, uh, especially when they get fed in the early game. Um, taking out LeBlanc, uh, it's it's a smart move, I think. Like, you don't want a LeBlanc to get, to get off in these kind of games. But it's it's it also looks a bit like... They saw the rise, uh, so Alistar being a great value to the team. And, and the Nilly, like you said, yeah, I believe Nilly was banned last game. Nilly is really strong at the moment. Uh, like TSM Sven Skaren, he likes to play Nilly a lot. Um, she has great clear, uh, great ganking potential. Uh, like uh, bans you expect and some target bans. Yeah, okay, so uh, looking at the other picks ups here, we have Lucian being picked up, but also Kindred. So, um, well, I've been out of league for a bit, so. Can you tell me a little bit more about Kindred and uh, how she, how he, uh, she, it's, uh, it is being used. Oh, I, I'm not sure if it's a he, she or it, uh, to be honest, but um, it's a lamp. Um, she, she, she can be used in like these triple AD comps, like you have Lucio. If they pick a Corky mid now and maybe a, a Lulu top or something with a great support, they have these triple AD comps, like protect your triple ADs and do a lot of damage while your two supports uh, defend them. That's a great composition. It's hard to pull off. At least I think it's not that easy to pull off. Um, but Kindred also has, has her save mechanic and insane burst mechanic as well. Like uh, if she throws all our spells on one on one champion, she can do a great damage. She can even save a teammate with her ultimate. Uh, and she has a, she has really nice clear in the jungle as well. And um, and of course with the range attacks and a red buff, a nice gank. So I, I'd like to see what what she can do with Kindred. Like. She's not that easy to play, but at this level where everyone is like master and challenger, you can expect some great kindred plays coming out. Uh, they, they are choosing for the Sandra and the Trash, so we won't see a triple AD comp, but more like uh, a standard composition um, with the blue team as well. Um, not to, not anything crazy happening right now. Although if the Z comes out, that might yeah. be a bit of a surprise into the Sandra. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you, yeah, It's going to be Zazet. But uh, in the meantime, though, um, we're also looking at, once again, the Graves uh, being picked up here for, for most likely the jungle role. And um, Bram. Well, we saw Bram's uh, power in the last game. Of course, they lost that game. But he's been involved in a lot of flashy plays and also a lot of good uh, saves there, especially on the AD carrier with Unbreakable. So that, that's something I'm very keen on actually uh, on seeing. But yeah, so Caitlyn being locked in, uh, yeah. or at least hoovered over, 
Uh, if they pick up Z, that's a lot of um, physical damage. Although they are now hovering over the new victor. Yeah, we see the the Brom Caitlyn combo like like in last game. They they seem to like that co combination in the bot lane. Um, it's it's a nice combination for us. If if Brom gets down uh, a stack of his passive, Caitlyn can really easily stack that. Um, and of course the new victor. Um, I'm a great fan of victor. I really liked him. Like he farms really easy and. In, in games like these, like if you see a victor with like 350 farm at 30 minutes or something, it's that's just insane. Um, and then after that point, he just bursts down anyone that hasn't doesn't have defense. So I think it's a great counter versus the kindred. Like kindred needs to be have like really quick reaction time to save someone or save himself. Um, yeah, I think uh, victor will be nice in this composition. Yeah, to be honest, I also like Atrakas who's hoovering over uh, Maokai right now. Maokai. I believe gets a if he uses his ultimate gets a massive AOE damage reduction. So that's a lot of additional defense against that burst potential that Victor is tossing out. Um, at the same time, uh, looking at Lissandra, uh, someone who can move in and lock down the Victor, perhaps they can just drop all, all uh, or rather put all their eggs in a basket, nuke down Victor, and then hope to win the team fight afterwards. But uh, we have all the champions now locked in. So if we're looking at the two compositions here, uh, we have the blue team which is easily visualized. Um, what is their game plan? Um, it looks to be the same as we saw last game. They, they basically can, they have the Trundle who can be strong 1v1 if he isn't first a Jax, but he's first a Maokai. So yeah, that, that will might be a wet noodle fight. It depends on the builds they are going. Like they will slap each other. They will just heal back. Um, in the jungle, we have two AD carries actually. You see a lot of AD carries in the jungle lately. Um, I'm excited to see what will happen. Like we saw the Graves take over for the first game uh, during the first 15 to 20 minutes. Um, maybe Kindred can do something about it this time. Um, like like we said, Kha'Zix isn't picked that much. There might be a reason for it. Um, and in the mid lane, uh, two high high dealing high damage dealing AP mid laners. But I think if if Lissandra can get down a good gank against the Victor, um, if he doesn't have his cleanse up, uh, Kindred and Lissandra can finish him really easily. Um, um, again, with the Caitlyn uh, Brown combo versus Lucian Trash, like that will probably be a farm lane. Uh, Caitlyn can poke out Lucian um, if if she Lucian isn't able to hit his Qs a lot. But like, if maybe they will go for one three one again, um, might be a little bit harder versus the Maokai. That's why I think Maokai is a pretty nice pick versus this team. If they would have picked something that's weaker than the Trundle, they could have gone for the for the double split push. But uh, it would be nice to see what what will happen. Like they've both both have nice team fighting teams. Um, I hope we will see big five v five fights where Maokai flashes in or something. Uh, I'm ex I'm excited to see this one. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting uh, battle. And uh, after game number one of tonight, I'm very well very keen on seeing game number two. And especially, well, easy visualize uh, is definitely a team I've been looking forward to seeing in action. But nevertheless, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we are waiting for uh, the spectator delay to run out, which is why we're currently uh, well waiting, that's also a little bit of an issue when playing on the live servers. Um, if we're looking at uh, what this championship is all about, it's about crowning the grand champion of the Benelux, the best team in the Benelux. We have eight teams. They came through the single, uh, the double elimination playoff stages. They are now in the group stages. We will be having a round robin, which means that all teams will play each other once, and then the top four or top yeah top four teams i believe uh, advance to the amsterdam arena uh, speaking of which um the tickets are available currently on eslbundelux.nl and don't forget it's not just the uh, games that you can go to the arena for but there's also going to be i believe an exposition with a lot of additional uh, games that can be played so even if you're uh, if, if you're looking to do something between games or perhaps you're um, my team, but they advanced to the finals and now I have to wait for the next. He still has something to do. So there's a lot of action going on in the arena. And of course, don't forget, there's also CSGO and Hearthstone. So make sure to uh, ch check that out as well. Nevertheless, we're almost uh, getting ourselves into the game itself. And yeah, we've been uh, looking a little bit about at the team compositions. We've been looking a little bit about at the players. Uh, Nick or yeah. Quick, so what, uh, um, what, what team do you expect to win? Um... Like if if I go for my gut feeling, I'd say easy visualize just because there are no name. Um, I haven't heard that much. Um, 
Yeah. Like, uh, so I think uh, like we lost Mika for a second. Ah, there he is. You lost me? Yeah, you were... Uh, uh, at least I, I, I didn't quite uh, <laughs> for a second, <laughs> but that just happens. That's oh. the way it is. In the meantime, though, uh, I believe we're about to uh, roll straight into the game. You think it's going to be easy to visualize. Well, then I, of course, have to play the uh, uh, the devil's advocate and um, hope, to, or rather, look at MCOM uh, to win here. Nevertheless, we're slowly but surely actually booting into the game. Let's hope it doesn't crash this time. We've had some issues with the servers, but I have to say we're almost on schedule. I do need to check the time here for a second. It is currently 2024, so let's be honest, that's a very... Uh, we, we did a good job of catching up here. Yeah, it also depends, of course, on how quick the games are going. Last game was uh, was a normal game time. Let's see how long this one will go. If, if this will be like an, an hour-long game, that will mess up our schedule. Completely, but that doesn't matter. If it's a great game, it can go on and on and on. <laughs> that That's the thing with League. We never know, but it's uh, good to see. Still, um, I'm, I'm very curious to see what strategies are going to come out here. Are we going to be looking at a five-man jungle invade, or are we looking at the spread composition that we saw, for instance, uh, coming out from Lachen de Gerda's previous game? Um, in the meantime, it looks like I cannot... Ah, perfect. I am in-game. It works out. Well. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm hoping to see some level one fights here. Like, I'm. I hope teams have prepared some nice level one tactics, um, especially to counter certain setups. Like to check if the if the enemy team is going for the uh, duo lane on the top, or if, what they will do. Um, you see both teams spreading out right now, so that indicates that they're not going for uh, a level one invade. Um, that's fine. But like, I so enjoy this level one invades. It's it's really. Dangerous to go for level one invades, but sometimes it pays off really well. Well, at the very least, they're going to have a, a very quick staring match composition here. Uh, 41 seconds into the game, uh, looking at the items, nothing too special here. Uh, Victor, of course, uh, armed with his hex core. Uh, the, of course, the uh, I believe the level one uh, hex core that uh, slowly but surely gives him a little bit of additional ability power. So yeah, a little bit of a slow start here, of course, in the game between the team of Easy Visualize and Mouse Control. But um, yeah, I'm, yeah, well, what can yeah, I say? I, I can try to hype it up, but it's it's kind of boring. <laughs> now, I'm excited to see what Victor will build first with his hex core. Like, uh, will he go for the for the two first items hex core and then build in a different item? And what will he pick? Like, will he go for the wave clear? Will he go for the burst? Uh, he'll probably go for the wave clear. But uh, yeah, it's I know I I've been interested in Victor since his changes. Before that, he wasn't that fun to play. Like I really liked to play mid lane, but after his changes, Victor was really really fun. And like you see him picked up way more. Um, let's see if he can kill the Lissandro one v one or Lissandro him. Well, like Lissandro is already dealing a little bit of damage here uh, using uh, her Q in order to uh, well hit Death Rip uh, there a couple of times. Actually, at the same time, bottom lane, both of the uh, bottom lane players or rather bottom lane teams now we're uh, taking their uh, jungle camp so both of them are going to be hitting level two at about the same time they might lose out a little bit on cs but uh should not be too horrible at all nice work there by brenners and atrocast definitely making good use of the relic shield there on atrocast yeah we have standard lanes here um we didn't have those last game but it will be interesting to see like both teams seem confident in their laning um to just go standard um in the top lane, we'll probably see that wet noodle fight, like slapping each other, um, grabbing CS. But in the bot lane, we have some potential for some great fights. Um, if Trash, Trash just got level two, but he doesn't decide to engage because the enemy team also took the jungle, of course, and went level two. But those fights will be very, really interesting. Or maybe they won't even fight and just try to farm. But like, I want to see this level two fight, man, or just insane bot lane fights where everybody TPs in. Like, like we see, um, MCON Logitech has two teleports, and uh, EC Visualize only has one teleport. So uh, that means Death Rip has to rotate really fast if they want to double teleport bot lane. And I think we will see that in like 10 minutes from now, maybe less, that uh, double teleports will be used there. I know it will. Uh, no, look at uh, Sazet here, he's moving in uh, as Sky uh, getting. Uh... Well, at the very least, revealed as Norp is also moving in, smoke screen going out. That should, at the very least, uh, block that. Uh, well, block. Yeah, that invade is not not going to happen, and uh, Kindred just going to, or rather, uh, Clown Sky is just going to be picking up the blue buff there. It's a little bit risky there. 
for uh, Clown Sky, but uh, good movement there by Atrocas. Hard time, maybe this base uh, can take over especially you give it. Ah, there we go, you're back again. <laughs> Seems like uh, you're sounding like Mr. Roboto. Um, unfortunately, uh, that means that uh, we might have some in well uh, overcoming from time to time. Let's hope that does not uh, happen here. In the meantime, though, Dominus in the mid lane uh, just uh, farming it up, but um, already behind Death Rip, who's making good use of his shield. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm closing some programs on my computer. Should be fine now. <laughs> this this is one of those days that everything goes wrong that normally doesn't go wrong, you know. Speaking of dicks going wrong, Norp is in a little trouble. Now T-Rox moving in. There's the pillar coming out. Sky is still chasing him down. Norp will barely survive there. Almost got the got the triple hit in, but uh, still, um, well. Then they could flash out freely without them being able to chase. Uh, and let's see, yeah, like the top, the top lane is pushed in again now, so that might be another opportunity for Clown Sky to come in. And Graves is currently in his jungle. You see Clown Sky moving up. It's an interesting uh, way this game is playing out, slowly but surely. But if we're talking about a little bit of uh, gold advantage, it's only 200 gold, but. It's a small advantage that can uh, be pushed out here for the team of Easy Visualize. Um, Victor going for the hex score upgrades immediately, has picked up the uh, Mark uh, 1. And let's take a quick look at what he has upgraded. He has upgraded the uh, Death Ray, so it is definitely the uh, wave clear that uh, you've been talking about, Nick. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically what I think almost everyone does on Victor. Like at level 6, I believe, maybe 7. Uh, you can just clear an entire wave with one spell, uh, and that makes farming with Victor very easy. And then he just pushes in the wave, then he can roam. Let's see if, he's, if he dis even decides to roam. Um, but like w with the engagement power of the Brom, yeah, there are possibilities for him to roam and kill the bot lane. Uh, they're pushing quite a bit, so we might see a tower dive soon. That's even why Kindred is here, he's looking to gank. Oh, and he's going in. Uh, the sides are back away uh -oh. here as the uh, Lantern uh, was placed, but a uh, very smart move here by Zazette the Sliver. They immediately decided, okay, we know this is going in, and then, the, well, immediately the escape combo happens. And it, it's pretty easy for Zazette the Sliver to escape. 90 caliber net into the assist from Zazette, which allows him to, uh, or rather, stand behind me, allowing him to jump to Sliver. It's a very easy way to escape those ganks. And speaking of ganks, um, Sky was looking at the mid lane, but uh, as decided to just uh, back away from that for uh, a couple of seconds. Yeah, you see the teams, they are feeling each other out. Like, where do you want to go? Where do you want to gank? Uh, like, the bot lane isn't scared. Like you said, they have even have two flashes up. They have exhaust, heal, and of course their own built-in escape mechanisms. Uh, they, they, that's why they pushed up a bit. But now they're getting pushed in. Let's see if Graves is going to capitalize on that. No, he's walking mm -hmm. straight to the mid lane to see what's going on there. Like, what you see on this level is the junglers, they, they really know what's happening in, in the game. They know where the, where the opposite uh, team is walking, they know where they place wards. It's really nice to see that, yeah, that they are aware of everything happening on the map. It's so a very... I, I like how this is uh, playing out here, but uh, at the same time... It's, it's uh, very cautious from both teams. No no deaths just yet. Uh, both teams just uh, hanging back if we're looking at both the top and the bottom lane. Uh, all the champions are at least in the position where they can still escape. Um, no aggressive moves just yet. No diving. And I guess also with, with the lack of Alistar in the game, uh, we're not going to see that immediately. Yeah, the teams are waiting. You, we are basically waiting for that one kill to happen to make everyone go loose. Like, everyone's playing a little bit scared. They don't want to give up that first blood. But as soon as that first blood goes down, let's hope uh, everything will... Uh, yeah, everyone will play with a little bit more uh, dare. Oh, yeah, and speaking yeah, of the dare right here, Sky found uh, Norb, but uh, it's a little bit of a fight here over the Scuttle Crab. Uh, you can also see uh, mid lane Death Rip slowly but surely moving in. Now also Atrocats coming in. And finally, the victor is Sky, who takes away the Scuttle Crab and 
you know, it's it's a it's a meager victory, but it gives them a little bit more vision around that uh, Rift Herald area. Yeah, they're also pinging on the Rift Herald and uh, and the wards around it. They they might look into taking that one down soonish. Um, but maybe Kindred just walked to the bot lane now. Maybe we'll walk back to the top, then clear some clear out some wards. And maybe we will see a fight around the Rift Herald. I, I'd like to see those fights. Uh, mostly teams decide to back away from that one because it's it's not worth to die with three people and then losing the Rift Herald. If if that happens, yeah, you lose you lose the grip over the game. But if they already have the scuttle crab now, can clear some boards. Oh, uh, Sazet is in a lot of trouble. He is getting uh, pushed around here multiple times. Now Bright Ash also coming in, and well, Sazet doesn't really have anywhere to go. Donus is now also moving in. Um, they're probably going to give the kill to Donus here because, well, giving to your mid laner, allowing him to catch up to Victor because he's 20 CS behind right now, and Donus oh. doesn't even get the blue buff. Oh, they gave the blue buff to the Kindred. Ah, yeah, that's sad to see. But yeah, indeed they. He's a little bit behind the Victor, um, Victor with his easy farming. Uh, giving a kill back to him uh, helps him a lot, but um, yeah, I think he's about even in gold now as the Victor, uh, which the, which helps him of course, but in the long run Victor will keep farming, like he's already back in the lane now, he will, be, he will keep the creep pushing in. Uh, the turret damage will uh, get bigger and bigger by the Victor. And uh, I, I think Victor will uh, might take over this game as the mid laner if he can, if he, if he will be able to roam. Yeah, that's uh, definitely the the big thing that we're going to be looking at. Can Victor roam? But also the like you said earlier, the teleports from Tirox and Dominus, those are going to be defining in this game. Uh, Dominus can instantly move to the bottom lane or the top lane if he so desires, and uh, then immediately throws, throw down the Frozen Tomb, allowing his team to meet, to just jump on a single target. Speaking of jumping on a single target, bottom lane, we have uh, Sky moving in slowly, but surely there's no ward here. Sky still in the brush, still waiting for that possibility to move in, but it's just not going to happen, not just not just yet. But uh, perhaps if they push a little bit further... Yeah, actually, Atrocast is uh, getting spotted out here by the wards, so they should be able to actually uh, well, know that something is happening here. Sky moving in. And the Lantern, well, it was right. Lantern, but that was all. It was just an yeah. attempt. Yeah, Atricus tried to clear out the, the traps by Caitlyn, and then maybe maybe pull him uh, pull his teammate in, but like he needs to pull Caitlyn, else the gank is pretty much useless. Like walking in like this, you will never catch out the Caitlyn. Uh, Brom didn't have his ultimate though, so it was a, was a nice try. But now they they look they look at maybe taking the dragon or taking Vision back over their blue area. Now they're walking back to the to the bot lane. And yeah, they were just just contemplating things, just setting up for later. But in the top lane, um, well, it's still that wet noodle fight you have been uh, talking about a little bit earlier. Tyrox can't really kill Sveen. And it's uh, just a matter of uh, waiting right now until something happens again. Because one kill in, well, 12 minutes? Yeah, I would like to see more kills on the board, of course. <laughs> it's a really slow-paced game, but maybe that means that the, that the players know what they're doing. And... Uh, <laughs> Especially know how not to die, um, but we see the wet noodle fight in the top lane. But we see like a, almost 20 CS differential. It's like three waves uh, almost, um, and we see that as well in the mid lane. In the bot lane, it's even. So basically, the two solo laners from Easy Visualize are winning their lane, and that's something they're pretty much confident with. They're, the Caitlyn is still ramping up. Uh, you want the Caitlyn to get a couple of items to uh, to do insane damage. So I think they're fine with this slow play. I think. It should be Logitech, uh, yeah, that need to step up their game and make some quick plays before uh, the victor gets out of hand. Uh, to be fair, though, if we're looking at the uh, junglers here, Kindred a little bit ahead. Now, finally, uh, having completed the, uh, well, the, uh, the, in the new jungle item 6.9, because it used to be the Devourer and now it's the Blood Razor, um, and Boots of Swiftness. So it's going to be very easy for Kindred to actually get in range and also stay in range. Boots of Swiftness giving a massive movement speed boost. But just look at uh, Clown Sky, just looking at all the possibilities and deciding, okay, mid lane is probably not going to happen, but let's see if we can actually fight the Graves here. Norp uh, spots out yeah. the guy with a wall part over the wall, and uh, of course the uh, Razor Beak buff. Yeah, uh, he has the vision, vision buff for an easy clear on the ward. He takes down the Scuttle Crap again, making great vision for the Rift Herald. <laughs> I'd like to see them go for the Rift Herald actually and not just dance around it. Um, oh, the recall by Sven. Does that mean he has to teleport back? Maybe would be uh, if if he teleports now. That means they they are two teleports behind, and I think uh, Mcon should really really capitalize on being two teleports down. 
Yeah, definitely. The moment uh, Isreen decides to, uh, or Sven decides to teleport, it's uh, immediate go to the dragon, take it out. That's basically uh, what it all boils down to. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of... Uh... Or the pinging the dragon, mm, even. This is interesting. Um, look at the look at the ward control by uh, by Mcon around the uh, around that northern scuttle crab in the top river. They have three four wards. <laughs> oh, as soon as I that, as I say that, Easy Visualize uh, clears out the ward and goes for the uh, Rift Heralds themselves. That's going to be interesting. Rift Herald is pretty powerful in this patch, especially after that uh, twenty minute buff that it now gives. Now Norp down to half hit points in a lot of trouble. There's actually a Movement speed uh, buff here from the scuttle crab that uh, was there, but uh, look at how low Norp is now in terms of hit points. He's going to have to back away, and this could actually be the moment where Mouse, uh, where Emcon could have gone for that uh, Rift Herald, but decides to back away. But, yeah, they yeah, they are just, a little uh, bit too afraid to go for it. The, the, if the Victor and the Brahm are there, like Brahm can throw in his ult, Victor can throw in his ult, they will take a lot of damage. So they they didn't dare to take it, but what they do there is going for the dragon. Yeah, they take down the dragon, get themselves the ocean buff, if I recall correctly. Yes, it's a uh, get help and mana back every uh, 18 seconds. So that's pretty nice, especially when consider uh, when if you're a poking team. But are they really a poking? Team? Mm, uh, no, not really. But like, eh, who doesn't like a little bit of health and mana from time to time? Um, it's always a buff. Like, and it's not giving a buff to the enemy team as well. Like, you, you have it yourself, but. The, and the enemy team doesn't have it either. Seems like a good uh, good trade to me. Nothing for the... Take from them everything and give <laughs> them nothing. Exactly. Um, nevertheless, though, top lane, two rocks now uh, being pushed in here by Sven. But uh, Sven going back to base uh, has Tiamat, so most likely, yeah, there it is. Titanic Hydra once again. So it is... Last game I wasn't entirely sure, but it seems to be the uh, de facto... Yeah, yeah they, build here for Trundle. It's it's a nice damage boost for Trundle, and with his ult, he just uh, gets really tanky if he uses that. And he has a lot of health from himself, from himself already. Um, like, if a Trundle gets on your AD carry and he starts slapping you, um, that's something you don't want to happen. Uh, Trash needs to pull out some crazy uh, place with his lantern or something to get him off you uh, at that time. But we're not at that stage of the game yet. Uh, not even close, probably, since it's going so so slow at this time. The wet noodles uh, are being fought about. Yeah, and the only advantage, I guess, maybe well. the blood razor. The blood razor could be pretty good here for uh, for Sky, especially in order to take down Trundle. Could be, but in the meantime, though, Sky moving into the jungle places a ward, and that's going to reveal uh, Norb immediately. Norb actually has that uh, razor beak buff, so he's able to immediately clear out that ward without an issue. But now top lane, Sven in a lot of trouble. But um, is he? A well, he's actually not in a lot of trouble. He's easily able to back away because he had that ward there. Yeah, he had the ward. He still had his ultimate ability up. Like Kindred knew, Clown Sky knew if he went in there, um, he, ju he would have just popped his ult, would have been uh, tanky, could have gotten a lot of health back. And in that time, Victor and Graves were already moving upwards. Um, it would have been uh, bad for uh, Mcon Logitech if, he, if they would have pursued that fight. But now it's it's really still as well. Like they're they're trying to do something, but. They, like Clown Sky is trying to force some ganks, trying like in the bot lane as we saw before, trying to gank them at the Rift Herald, trying to gank top, but it's just not working. They, the the team of Easy Visualize is able to go, to back out at the at the right moments and even capitalizing on other things in other lanes at that time. Yeah, and actually uh, looking at this game, and to be honest, um, assuming well everything remains uh, equal, this is actually good for the team of Mcon. Especially because, well, once we reach the later stage of the game, uh, 1000 gold is a lot of uh, help right now. It's usually finishing a big item, but later in the game, well, uh, you don't have to be a scientist in order to understand that uh, 1000 of uh, 20,000 is more effective than 1000 uh, when comparing it to, say, 50, 60, yeah. 70,000. Yeah, and, uh, and if you look at it that way, it's 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 really great for Mcon. But I, I think if we go to late game and Ethrip gets all his items, uh, he will blow up everyone in the enemy team. Maybe not Maokai and, Bro and Trash, but uh, like Kindred, uh, Lissandra, Lucian, they really need to watch out for that uh, for that Victor. Like he already has the slow from the Rileys at this point. So if, if he gets on them, it's really hard for them to get away. 
This is definitely uh, one heck of a match already. Very, very close. But uh, take a quick look at the Rift Herald right now, as it's uh, once again being taken down. Um, but this time it's Norp and Sven, so actually it's not once again being taken down. It's for the first time this game, of course, but nevertheless, if they can actually uh, give it to Sven, he's going to be tankier than uh, anyone else on the battlefield. I believe he gets 5% reduced damage. Um, I believe so. Um, at least it's a nice, it's a nice buff for the for the wet noodle fight in the top lane. It means that um, it just went from one wet noodle versus a really strong wet noodle. Like he can push the top lane really hard right now, as we see him do. His minions get a buff as well. Oh, but uh, Maokai is afraid. Yeah, the advantage, of course, uh, with Maokai is that he gets that uh, health back every seven spell casts or something, and the counter both players. But nevertheless, yeah. um, Sven right now not afraid to take damage. Not afraid to just push in as hard as he can, forcing T Rox to just stay in the lane when he could, for instance, be jumping to the bottom lane where there's actually a ward right next to Sliver. As the Zed is there as well. Oh, he now cancels out the ward, so no teleport shenanigans. Yeah, exactly. If if T Rox decides to teleport away, Sven can immediately take down that turret, push a really big wave probably in the second turret, and take that down a bit. So like, if T Rox he just doesn't want to teleport away at this time, and that's great for his uh, for the bottom lane from Sven. Like, the bot lane is not that afraid now for the teleports. Oh, what do you see in the jungle? Yeah, a little bit of a uh, skirmish there between uh, Norp and Sky. Of course, Dominus came in, but it uh, all came down to uh, Sky deciding to uh, smite the Razorbeak camp, actually giving him that buff. In the meantime, though, Sky now taking the uh, blue buff. Actually, most likely going to be handing it over to Dominus. This time, they're not <laughs> going to screw it up. Uh, no, this time they haven't. Okay, that was a little bit of a... Uh, yeah, uh, it's always tricky with the red buff. It's it's tricky with the red buff, um, especially if you use all your spells. You, if you're a mid laner, just wait with your spells a little bit and then burst down those last 200 HP or something. But we are are we seeing a dragon fight coming up? The dragon is coming up in five seconds. We well, see. Let's be uh, honest. The dragon already set up the traps, so uh, we're getting ready here. Dragon now uh, respawning. Norp is already on the dragon. You see, says it. The sliver already setting themselves up here as Death Rip is also moving in. Sven is just waiting in the jungle in, uh, in order to uh, be able to teleport in normally, and they decide to just let the dragon go for now. No, Sky was a little bit too uh, close for comfort there. Gets an ace in the hole to the face, but Dominus needs to be very careful here that he doesn't get locked down. But yeah. Um, Interesting choice here by uh, Mouse Control, actually letting Easy Visualize uh, take control of the dragon in a very easy way. Um, while they actually yeah. had all their ultimates available. They they probably didn't want to walk uh, through those skating traps and didn't want to walk into a Braum. If you walk into a Braum ult, well, there's a Victor there to clean you up uh, really quickly. Uh, that's going to hurt your team really bad. And like even with the Graves ult following after that, they can blow up uh, a squishy from your team like really fast. Uh, like it's it's probably a good call to play it safe there. Um, but no, yeah. But for us casters, we want to see some action. We want to see kills. Speaking of uh, action um, and interesting stuff, Lucian, Black Cleaver, and the Yomus Ghostblade. Oh yeah, that's that's a different build um, that I've seen lately. Um, like, but Lucian is 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 an ADC that also benefits a lot from using his spells, of course. Um, so you can, you can build him in different ways. Um, uh, against uh, th this team comp, you might think, um, I need that cooldown reduction a little bit more, so I'm going for uh, the Black Cleaver. It's it's like an experienced AD carry. Like, no normally all AD carries build almost the same every every single time, but those experienced AD carries, they know what to, be, what to build against uh, a certain team comp or a, cer a certain champion even. Well, the advantage is, of course, it works pretty well once uh, Victor starts building his Sonya's Hourglass and uh, Trundle is going to start building some uh, armor as well, so it will shred through that armor relatively easy, and of course the 40% cooldown reduction means that uh, Branish is going to be jumping from left to right. But yeah, it's an interesting one. I'm very curious to see what this is uh, going to turn out, to, uh, or rather turn into, and yeah, once again, one, only 1,000 gold separating the two teams. Yeah, you can't really... It's definitely not going to be a battle of, of gold right uh, for the next 10 to 20 minutes. I'm assuming it's all going to come down to who can get the next dragon and perhaps uh, turn that into a team fight. Yeah, th this will probably be one of those games that goes on till 30, 35 minutes. Then one big team fight around Dragon or Baron will happen and then the game is done. 
And we've seen that happen uh, a lot lately. Um, not everyone is that happy with it, uh, of course, like logically. Oh, but we see a fight happening. Yeah, top lane, massive fight. Oh, beautiful brown build in the sky, keeping his team alive as long as possible. Atrox is in a lot of trouble. Sky trying to escape. This is not going to happen as everybody's just, just jumping on one target. There was no chance that that could happen. You could say they were like lambs to the slaughter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice pun there, but it's it's 3 for 0, and now they are uh, looking into taking down that Baron, it's past 20 minutes. The Baron Nasher is there, the Pink Ward is being placed, victory is coming to the Baron. Um, this is a, a great advantage for EC Visualize at this moment, they can take the game into their own hands. Um, are they looking to steal? I don't think so. No, they have no, uh, they have no smite available, and uh, sending in Lissandra is just a suicide mission, so uh, they decide not to send in Dominus right now. Baron goes over to the uh, team of ET Visualized, and I, <laughs> this is pretty much what, well, I mentioned for a second. It's all not really going to come down to that gold advantage. It's going to come down to that, uh, well, one good team fight into Baron or Dragon, and in this yeah. case, it was the. You uh, you made a prophecy, and it came out a couple seconds later. Let's see what they do with it with this Baron buff, though. Let's see if they go for the three one three uh or one three one uh setup or they just go five man mid or something like we see um we see the trundle the troll going to top lane with the big wave um lucian is claiming that right now and we see the rest actually going to the mid lane so they're going to the, for the two lane push maybe uh, victor is going for his brew buff probably um I'd, I'd like to see um oh trundle engaging Yes, and this uh, jumping straight to Brennash. Brennash forced to use the culling to try and escape, and uh, he does manage to do so. Popped his um, Yomus Ghostblade as well. In the meantime, like you said, it's uh, de uh, Death Rip with his uh, blue buff uh, right now. Once again, the Death Ray coming out as well. And it's just a slow push, and they're going to get that advantage, of course, from the Baron buff. Uh, those minions are getting, going to get super strong. And um, also the Kana can can minion, uh, which is not in this wave, but is going to be in the next. Um, does get that, I believe, the long range shot. In the meantime, though, Atruka tries a hook, doesn't quite land it, lands it on one of the minions, and that allows the team of Easy Visualize to just keep pushing and they take down yet another turn. Yeah, they're, they're going for the 4-0-4-1 uh, push, like the bottom lane is pushing slowly in, um, then they're going 4 man mid, 1 top. Um, it's really strong with the Caitlyn as well. Look at her 4 traps laying down uh, around the turrets, like the enemy team can't come close. If they step in one of them, one of the uh, traps, yeah, you get blown up by Victor, uh, and Victor Graves combo even. And Trundle, he's winning top lane really hard right now. Like the yeah. red noodle is is over. Like Trundle is uh, really uh, slamming down with his club right now. Definitely the king of top lane right now. And yeah. um, but to, to be fair, it's going to be very hard for Tyrox to actually fight back against those super minions. But in the bottom lane, immediately the engage once again. It's the jump from Ram and immediately the knock up. It doesn't quite. Uh, Turn into an instant kill, but they do manage to get at least two kills into uh, Sky. And now Atrocast is on the run. He's trying to escape this one. Can he actually do it? No, he's taken down. And that's a 4 4 0. And you saw Sky in the middle of the fight. He was trying to get that, uh, well, at the very least, use the uh, Lamb's Respite in order to keep everyone alive. But yeah, it only lasts for what? Four seconds? Maybe, yeah, uh, yeah four seconds. And after <laughs> that, the burst damage comes down. And that burst damage with Graves and Victor is uh, too much to handle. And like yeah, like you said, like it will come down to one fight, and then the game is basically over. Um, in this case, for two fights, one fight to get the Baron. But uh, yeah, easy visualize take down uh, the first game of the, or their first game of the first week. Uh, yeah, fairly easy. Just uh, two two sprints there at the end, and uh, yeah. they take them down in 27 minutes. Yeah, you have to of course give it to uh, give it to them. They played very cautiously, very conservative at the start of the game. Of course, Z giving up first blood, it didn't end up in them losing the game. But um, yeah, again, it came all down to that team fight. Very well played here by both fa uh, by both teams. But nevertheless, they still have six games left to play in this tournament, so they can still both make it to the Amsterdam Arena.